on this computer. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Tim Erickson. I am the artistic director of the Boomerang Theater Company, and I am here with artists and husband and wife, Susan Ferrara and Zach Calhoun. Welcome, my friends. Hey. hey. <laughs> so um, good to see your face. Yes. It's good to, it is good to see yours as well. Um, I will give you a little intro about uh, Zach and Susan. Zach Calhoun is an actor and a playwright. His work has been seen recently in the film The Subject by Chisa Hustinson and in The Braid, directed by Mitzi Perone. On stage, he's been seen in Alabama Shakes in a play by his wife, Susan Farrar, called Buzz and the Fulton Street Theater. He has also, his boomerang stuff is Hamlet, The Real Thing, King Lear, Giant Variation, You'll Have Had Your Whole, and Henry the Fourth, Part One. And his plays have been workshopped at Orlando Shakes, Capital Rep, Boomerang, Living Arts, Flux, Oberon, among many, many others. Susan, on the other hand, uh, is an award-winning playwright, writer, and producer. Her play Buzz, which we just mentioned that Zach was in down at LM Shakes, was directed by Carrie Preston and had its world premiere last September. All right, that is the formalities. <laughs> that's it. That's it. So that's it. Thanks so much for coming. Out. All right. See ya. <laughs> that was cool. That was great. <laughs> great seeing um, you. One of the one of the so Sarah suggested that um, we have the two of you on together. I was going to have the two of you on separately, and she said it'd be cool if the two of you were on together because you would be you are the first married couple that we've had oh. on the chat show that we're doing. Oh, cool. And uh, so how how has everything been going? I know we were talking before we taped about how when things shut down on March 13th, but um, how are you guys getting through? You're in an apartment together for extended periods of time. Like, what's that like as creative people and married people? Um, honestly, I didn't give it much thought. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if that, that's like my non-answer to your question. I, I mean, obviously before this happened, I didn't give it much thought. It just, it, like no, there was no reality to the 13th of, Yeah. March when we stepped into our apartment and didn't know at that moment that that's where we were going to be for the next however many weeks, months. Yeah. Um, it's been surprisingly good. I mean, I think generally speaking, and Zach, jump in, I think generally speaking, uh, once the, uh, like the initial moments of what this was passed and we settle into this time in layers, so you acclimate and then something new happens, you acclimate, you do better, you acclimate, et cetera. Um, I, I think that communication by, by, its, by, by need, by, by need and desire has to kind of level up. So for us, I mean, I think it's been kind of a wonderful experience and we're incredibly fortunate in I a lot of ways. So. You know, that I can say that, that it's been wonderful for us is because yeah. we're so fortunate. Um, I think the main thing that mm, made it work for us is we've been very, very careful to, to, uh, to create structure mm -hmm. uh, in our weeks, in our days, uh, division of labor on how we handle certain things, whether it be uh, like, I mean, for, for like two months, we didn't even leave the, the apartment building. She didn't leave the apartment. And, and the division of labor was, I was the person that would go outside. Uh, but uh, things like that, we, we have check-ins every day, like literally structured, you know, how are you doing today? How are we doing together? You know, and whether that's like artistically, emotionally, financially, you know, we, we're just checking in with we each other. We have production other. meetings. Like, yes. swear to God, that's what they are. Meetings. I mean, we kind of did this, and I don't know if you guys did. Like, before we got married, we sat down and literally gamed out our entire, you know, wedding. So, you know, and it was literally like, who's going to stage manage? Who's going to do this? Okay, we have this person speaking, yada, yada, yada. And now we've just naturally kind of transitioned that, even though we've been married for 10 years and together for like a bedillion. Um, <laughs> We've kind of just tra like transferred that into our regular life, and in this time, um, just kind of up up the game. Yeah. You know. So you know, how do we handle it? It's been good, and we do a lot of talking, and I like him. <laughs> He's a nice man. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. So. Um, how is it? Do you do you find that you have opposite like 
do you have space where you can go into one, Zach, and Susan can go into the other, and like, <laughs> need a moment of like? Well, um, the way I feel like we've created that was about after this sort of two months of really locking ourselves down and quarantining, um, I started running again. Mm -hmm. Uh, which, which <laughs> that's been a great, you know, sort of outlet for me um, emotionally and, and and physically, and and so that's a good hour each day that if I'm away. Yeah. Um, I haven't run the last week because it's you know obscenely hot. It's so hot. But uh, but yeah, I mean that's one one of the things we've been doing. Um, but we we just generally try to if someone has a Zoom call, then the other person tries to be like extremely quiet or unobtrusive or. Um, puts on headphones or, or pants <laughs> or pants and uh, and um, yeah I mean it's uh, sometimes we might do like a, a call with a family member in the other room but I mean we live in what a one-bedroom apartment so it's sort of that's, that's it's what it's sort been of, for it is what it is <laughs> um, yeah 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 I mean we I don't know we have to I, I, it kind of feels like once you've been locked into a room it almost feels I'm not trying to be fruity, but it does feel like you're on stage. And, you know, at some point, it's just like, well, I know he's going to move this way on this line. So I'm just going to move this way because I know that that's what he does when he goes to get his coffee in the morning. So it does feel like a negotiation of space in a really fine-tuned way. And we seem to be doing okay, yeah. you know? That's awesome. And we've been super fortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So artistically, how has it been? Like, um... Or do you feel like you're with this time right, that we've all been sort of gifted in a way, right? Yeah. Do you feel like you are uh, able to still be creative or and get stuff done or? Like, yeah, or I mean, I would. Def my answer to that is is yes, and again, I say that because you know, incredibly mm -hmm. fortunate. But um, you know, I when again, you know, back in March. Um, there was such a hustle coming into this and with all kinds of things that were going on, wonderful things, things that I was behind on, some things that I was ahead of project wise. And so when this happened, uh, mostly like the next couple of weeks were just a series of conversations of how things couldn't go forward or had to be put on pause. Yeah. And, uh, and that's fine. They'll either come back or they, in, a, in a new way or they won't and something new will replace whatever it was. But I don't know. I honestly don't. I, I, the easy, the easy answer to your question is, I have been able to be creative every day because I'm looking at the bulk of my day as development. Um, so the things that I didn't have time for, like I don't even know how iMovie works, and, it's, and, it, and everybody tells me it's the easiest thing. I'm like, I don't know. So. You know, the things that I was always curious about but didn't have time for, I'm like, well, this is kind of cool. Let me try and learn this thing. And I didn't, like, I did think I was going to learn how to play the guitar that I've had for a billion years, but that didn't happen. But just like generally speaking, I've been able to, you know, continue the projects that I have with this idea that they may come back simply because I'm interested in finishing the scripts. And I'm talking mostly about writing. Right. Um, and sure, there's, there's been auditions and all those things. That's lovely. That's less uh, less under my control than my ability to create um, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, she also uh, was asked while we were in quarantine to do uh, a recording for uh, Michael Urey and Doug Nevin's Pride Plays of Vince Gatton, a monologue from Vince Gatton's play, oh, yes. Andrea, which is on their Instagram page. Which was super cool. It's it's she's it's really really script. great. And, it's really lovely. It's so much fun. And a lot of that, like I did a, a reading, you know, as an actor, I've been doing readings, one of which was with a company in Hong Kong. And that's been kind of interesting yeah. because what you would think, oh, we can't get a reading together because so is so and so is in LA, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and really what happens then is everybody's like, well, all bets are off. Now we can all, everybody's free-ish. Yeah. Let's all get into the room together and read read through this or or what have you. So that's been interesting. Oh, that's really awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, how, did, how did that come about? Did somebody just refer you, or did you submit for something in Hong Kong? Yeah, I mean, like I've been in New York for a lot of years now, but I still have uh, folks in Chicago. That's where I came from, and so you know, like honestly, like everything else, it's it's word of mouth, and somebody will get in touch with me and call, and then 
I'm doing a reading and I'm here or there or whatever. And I'm grateful for it. Like that, right on, I'll do whatever. It's super cool. It's been fun. And it's also been fun to reconnect with people in that way. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah sure. Well. Yeah. Um, yeah, most, I mean, the, the kind of the cool thing is that, um, you, you know, a lot of, a lot of folks, yeah, are reaching out and I'm reaching out to them or whatever, but everybody wants to keep on working or keep on fine tuning, whatever. So, so opportunities are coming in unique ways, I guess, yeah. but they're still very much kind of rooted in friendship and collaboration and the things that, you know, people I've worked with before and wanted to work with again. So it's been great. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Zach, what about for you? How has it been going creatively? Uh, well, what's interesting was before this, I hadn't really written anything since 2016. And it really sort of messed with, I hadn't really, I, I might have worked on like something that was someone else's thing, but not no writing really. And uh, it happened right, in 2016, it might have started <laughs> some way. I don't know. He's I mean, it was, it was a weird, too. it was a weird moment. And so in January, I was sort of before this was uh, it's like maybe let's say the 15th. I was I I, I had decided that I was going to take the, the the artist way book and try to open it up again. And right about that time, I started doing the the uh, the morning pages. And what's interesting was I started let's say on the 15th of January and I haven't stopped. Like I didn't stop. I've been doing it every single day religiously all the way through this. And what started out as, I don't know if you've ever done them, but it was sort of like, you know, you, you just literally, the, the point is to fill three pages, right? Just fill three pages of writing. And, you know, normally maybe you'll start out and be like, well, I think this is stupid. I don't know why I'm doing this. And by the time 13th or a week later, you're like, you, you know, Broadway shut down and it become, it's almost become like a plague diary um, of like, uh, you know, this, how many people died, you know, in the country. And, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I wrote, I've written a play uh, in this time and I've, I'm about 11 pages into a pilot. So oh. but that's taken a long time to sort of get to that. I know there are people like Adam Sinkowitz, who's like on his third play. Amazing. This week. Know, this yeah. week. Yeah, just and, yesterday. And, um, yeah. you know, um, everyone else is writing their King Lear. Uh, so, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, that's, I've been just pushing myself and pushing myself, but, uh, you know, eventually I'll get around to maybe having a Zoom reading of this, this uh, like second or third draft of this thing that I wrote during this time. And I'll tell you about it off. Oh. <laughs> right, it's a secret. You can't tell me. No, it's just you can't tell everybody else. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the funny, the funny part about it is, I mean, obviously, so many people are struggling right now, right? There's, there's financial insecurity. There's health insecurity. There is industry insecurity for us in terms of the entertainment industry. Yeah. So, with all of these things sort of, you know, crashing down around our ears on so many levels, um, I feel like we've had to sort of take whatever small um, like small gifts come from this, right? And right now, the only thing that's that I've been able to find is time um, mm -hmm. to be able to channel, to think exactly what Zach is talking about, channel some, you know, whether it's to be stream of consciousness or, you know, just what you're going through and sort of make it into something that, that feels like you were productive today. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's definitely true. So for the, for the two of you as writers, but also as just creative people in general, um, do you have a, a way, like Zach's talking about the page, every pages every morning from the artist way. Um, Zach, was that always how you wrote like first thing in the morning or did you have a different schedule or process to do it when you were writing? I, I was in around January 15th. I was just trying to get it in sometime during the, and Julia Cameron's whole thing was it should be like, it should literally be like you get up and you, you shake out your brain and once we yeah i mean it's literally I like did that once it, you'd be surprised what came out it was not good yeah, you just shake the crap out and then Jeez. but then eventually you know if you've done all that you, you know um then then the creativity or it, it, you you stop looking at at words when you're doing it every day it's more about filling it out and making the hand do this and you stop uh 
anyway, at the beginning of the process of the, the, the sort of pandemic, I would do it first thing in the morning. Now we sort of have a thing where we wake up and I'll do dishes and stuff until we're all set. We have the meeting. Once the meeting is over, then we start our day. Then we start our day and I start my pages. So I usually get around to it about, let's say, 8.30 or 9.30 every morning. Oh, that's um, great. And, and then, you feel like this, this process of the morning is, is different than when you used to write pre-2016? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. an interesting question. More fulfilling? More, more, uh, more creative? Yeah. Well, I feel more in touch with my voice and more in touch with what I have to say now. Uh, and more in touch with, if I don't know what I have to say, at least trying to get down what's happening. Yes. So that someday I can read it again or yeah, I, I don't know why I feel the need to write it down. Uh, even if it's just reporting what I read on Twitter or report, like even reporting it to this paper. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. And I, yeah. And Susan, what about you? Do you, do you write first thing in the morning or at night or what's your, what's your, I, um, I have a couple of different, well, I usually, I usually focus on three projects. And each of them is at a different uh, different um, point in the process. So one is research, one is like maybe a first or second draft, and one is almost at the end. And usually, when it's almost at the end, I start uh, transforming it from a word doc into a uh, final draft okay. thing, and do like the last bit of edits there. Um, and also because my, and it, it's worse now, quite honestly, uh, prior to this, I would say my brain would hop around all over the place. Now it's bananas. So <laughs> kind of like just, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so now just like, ha like if I can plug into something, it actually helps me to focus. And I do write, I, I write throughout the day and I write at night. We have like a super old cat who wakes me up, not him. Uh, wakes me up like two to three times and so I'll even sometimes be on my phone and writing after he's woken me up and because I'm supposed to get up and feed him which sure, I do of course a sucker um, he's 19 years old yeah he's, not, he's like a stick with hair on it he is not, <laughs> he's like half cat half like I don't, I don't know what he is he's crazy um, but he's I love him and of course when he wakes me up at one three you know five and seven I'm like all in um, but yeah like I wouldn't say, like, if anything has changed for me in terms of how I approach what I'm doing, mm -hmm. it's that I kind of have to harness my brain because depending upon the input, like if I look at the news for five seconds, then I know I'm going to need extra time to calm down. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, take a walk. All right, take a walk, walk around, do some yoga, do something. Because it's, it can't, it's, it's shocking to me right now. And I would have probably wrongly said in the past that I'm somebody who can take on anything. Um, now I'm very much aware of how little I can take on. And also that, uh, you know, I, I would have also said prior to this that I was uh, an extrovert or close to being an extrovert. I'm like, that is such a lie. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, nah, I actually, and I guess going back to your original question, that's um, part of what has made this okay because you know and again okay is relative uh, um, is that I am kind of alone with my thoughts and figuring things out bit by bit I like that uh, you said that you're the person who can't who has to recognize how little they can take on or what what specific you're working on three things at a time I know <laughs> it is I know but, it's, but I'm literally following my brain <laughs> right, exactly. I, you know, like, and then of course, and I know all of us do this, you know, even now, it doesn't matter, I can be a billion years old, and I will, somebody will call me and say, hey, do you have time for this? Yes. Yeah. And I absolutely do not have time for it <laughs> at all. Like, no time. No, none. Um, but, but, you know, have you ever directed me? Like, who needs me to direct anything? <laughs> I mean, but somebody's like, I think you'd really make a great director. I'm like, I think you're right. And that's a lie. So, uh, you know, so now they're all, yeah. So now I have to figure out, I mean, I've been an actor for a billion years. I'm sure I can, I can't. I can't even say this to you because you're a legitimate director. So I, I'm taking that off the table. I, somebody asked me. 
Yeah. You're, you're, you're fine. You could direct. <laughs> well, yeah, I, whatever. I was going to say creatively, the other thing that has sort of changed is when we, when we each have been asked during this time to put ourselves, you know, on tape for a voiceover or put ourselves mm -hmm. on tape for it, it, uh, you know, before the pandemic, self-taping was, it's been a long process to learn how to do it. And it's always filled with anxiety. And now when you do it, you're like, it doesn't matter because the world ended. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, so, so there's this sort of like relaxed, you know, oh, we'll just do another take. Oh, that looked weird. Oh, you know what? Okay. It doesn't matter. Here's my weird take. We're not going to get the job. That we can't be here during the middle of the pandemic. We yeah. can't fly to Europe anyway. Yeah, so let's just go. send them the tape. You know, yeah. like, you just don't care. Yeah. yeah. It Kind of Sarah, Sarah was putting herself on tape the other day and, for something, and she was just like trying to slate, and it was going. She was just like, oh, "I hate my hair. I hate the light. I hate this. I hate that," um, and everything was going wrong. And so she ended up doing like four different cartoon voices of her slate, and then she <laughs> got, awesome. got it right, like the Cartman voice, the Elmo voice, whatever it was. And <laughs> like, All right, That's now I'm ready perfect. to do this, you know, because at the end of the day, it's not that serious. Yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. great. It's free. It's sort of like, and you can actually look at your, you can actually learn how to use iMovie or learn how to um, edit, edit a voiceover <laughs> thing, you know, or, um, you yeah. know, learn how to actually use your microphone. Right. You know, in a way that you were like, oh, I just have it. I plugged it in. I, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't need a book. It's pretty obvious how this works. Talk yeah. About <laughs> yeah. You think. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. Yeah. So, okay. So here we go. Um, yeah. Let's see. And then I think we're on the last question, which is what? when you get stuck, mm -hmm. you, if you run into a problem, whether it be uh, writer's block or whether if you were acting in something and you're like, ah, I can't figure out why, what the motivation here is or whatever it is, when you get stuck where you feel like you're up against a wall, is there mm -hmm. a piece of advice that you sort of fall back on? that is the thing that sort of either reconnects you or regrounds you or sort of gets you to push through? I think it's a game show answer, quite honestly. <laughs> really? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, call a friend, um, call a friend, go for a walk, pick up a book, you know? I think, you know, there are things, and I don't know how people manage, but, you know, there are times when I just need to read something that's ridiculous or watch something that's ridiculous or have a ridiculous conversation or call a friend and tell a joke. So I think it's, you know, my answer to that is, what is it that you don't allow yourself to do that will actually make you feel better? Because you think you have to be working, because you think you have to be focused on all three projects when your brain is exploding, because you think you have to do your morning pages. My advice would be to really, you know, get, be honest with yourself and what is it you need? You need ice cream? Have some ice cream. You know, do what's going to make you feel good because we're going to have to connect these dots, these feel good dots and create a bridge that leads us from wherever we are right now to wherever we're going to be. That's awesome. I love that. I like the ice cream part, especially. Well, I, it's because I really love ice cream. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, for me, uh, I... It's weird. I, I, I've been trying to learn to just sort of trust, you know, what, uh, to, to, to be kind to yourself and to, to, you know, sometimes you can have this feeling that you need to, to, to reinvent the wheel and if, if and, and, and think that um, maybe something that you know how to do that you can, that you can fall out of bed doing or something like that is, is somehow not a valuable or marketable skill or, or you, you know, that thing that, that everyone knows, oh, she does that thing or Zach is good at this thing. And you think, oh, that's nothing. It, it, it's something. And sometimes like with this play that I wrote, I, I, you know, my particular skill, I feel like as a writer is mimicking and sort of being able to write as someone else's voice, do you know what I mean? Um, so when I was having trouble, I, this is what I'll tell you about the play, that I, I went to the Atlantic Theater Company and I never did a mammoth play, but I know everything about mammoth plays. I, I, I know how they sound. I know so much about David Mamet. It, it's, it's ridiculous. And I just thought, well, you're not writing anything. What if you just, what if you just wrote 
something or a scene or something about a David Mamet character in the style of David Mamet. And that is how the play was born. <laughs> so, but it was that, but it's that thing that I was like, this is my, this thing in my own writing that I don't think much of, but, but it is a skill, you know, it is something that I can, you know, when I, when I wrote for Then We Got Help, I, I was writing to be the voice of the other writer, you know, um, and it's sometimes hard to think, oh, that's something. So if there's something you can fall back on and fall back on to get yourself creative again, is what I'm saying. And um, I don't know. Yeah, no, it sounds like you're re just reconnecting to the thing that you, that makes you, that you understand, right? Yeah. To you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not letting the other stuff sort of get in your head. Yeah. 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 Because it's just moments. I mean, I mean, some moments last a few days or even a week, but mm -hmm. if you can do what it is you know will give you some joy, yeah. the hope is that it'll pass because it always does pass. And we've relied on our friends and our family mm -hmm. and they've relied on us. And it's been kind of nice during this time to have conversations that are not so superficial which is kind of uh, kind of wonderful yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and kind of not. <laughs> um, that's that's for the family who you know whatever. Sure. Um, you know, but um, I'm kidding. It's it's truly kind of lovely to be able to just have conversations that matter. Yeah. And realize that the conversations you thought mattered before don't. Yeah. No. So we're taping this on July 14th. Um, do you have stuff coming up that you want uh, that you can let people know about or that we can uh, help promote either with a link or with uh, whether it be readings or um, stuff? Um, we did talk about that we can see Susan doing a monologue from Vince Gatton's play, which we'll link in the, in the text below. But what else is up there that we can go check out about your stuff? Um, I know uh, the the film that I was in, uh, The Subject, which is written by Cheesa Hutchison and directed by Lanny Zipoy. And it's uh, great, by the way, on festivals, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's like, been it's doing wonderful. great. It's won two outstanding uh, uh, narrative uh, features and it's gotten into like three or four other festivals. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm barely keeping track of it, but, but it's doing very, very well. Uh, and it's unbelievably um, prescient and timely uh and and i and so i will see if i can find some sort of link or i uh for a festival that because it, it's been in a couple but uh that that is something that a lot of these places are, are still starting to do like you can watch them online or you can the, one of the film festivals <laughs> was at a drive-in so yeah, yeah so super cool so that was interesting because then she has to go back to the sound guy and be like okay for a drive-in <laughs> sound <makes it> like, <laughs> right. uh, but it's uh it, it's it's a really really great film i'm really proud of it and um you know i'm i'm very small part but i i had a I, i'm just so proud and so proud so, of that. so you're the subject of the subject what you're saying um, no <laughs> the one person no, it's, it's about a uh a documentary filmmaker yes. who uh is played by jason biggs and and um i'm one of his like film school cameraman and uh so i have a couple scenes where i'm actually shooting you know with the actual camera and everything and uh and they're shooting me shooting that's so awesome. kind of, yeah um uh, but that's that's kind of a bet i mean is there anything I mean, else I, well i i don't know hopefully i'll be able to share it but i just wrapped up um something at the actors theater of louisville um they kind of got in touch with us uh it was one of the regional theaters that we were talking about um for buzz mm -hmm. prior to where we are now part of the pandemic and um they said well do you have anything else and so we kind of did it was kind of a wonderful collaboration it was an experiment um because we were thinking um carrie and myself uh carrie in particular is the director like how can is there a way to do is there a way to do theater on zoom what can we do so we took an excerpt of one of my plays the silver kitchen that we thought would work best for this and we had somebody in Los Angeles, Julianne Emery, playing one of the characters, and then a husband and wife team in uh, Astoria, uh, Chris Gerson and T uh, Tara Flanagan in Queens. And we took that excerpt, Julie filmed in LA, and Chris and Tara filmed in, um, in Astoria, 
and then Chris and Carrie kind of edited it and put it all together. And it is theatrical and it is unique and we learned a ton, but we were working with um, Actors Theatre of Louisville, kind of like all of us learning together, their team and our team, you know, what's your season gonna look like? And can it look maybe a little bit like this? What can you do? What do you need to, to actually, you know, put on say, you know, a piece, you know Shakespeare or whatever. Um, and that was fascinating. That was fascinating. So I'll see if I can't share the link, you they, know? Because it literally, it was like, so Julie had the camera, her, they were using an iPhone, an iPhone camera. And then, but Carrie was on FaceTime directing the scene. And then there was another, like, it was, a, it was crazy. It was a convergence of technology in order to shoot uh, an actor. And we used a green screen. Um, everybody just got super like, well, how does this, like problem solve it was so you know, How does this work? How does this work? And then you're watching what Carrie's watching, you know, and then finally you see a little tiny Julie, you know, in the, in the back. It was like two phones watching each other. Crazy. You know, one videoing, the other one videoing. But it makes you think about, <laughs> it makes you think too, it, during this time, um, about casting, you know, and how that can work. It's like, oh, you're a husband and wife team? Great. Oh, you guys are, you know, you're not technophobes? Fantastic. Um, you know, yeah. we have friends who are literally being sent lighting equipment that they have to put together. And, you know, she's sending us her voicemails of meltdowns because she's like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> so everybody's trying to figure out what this is and how we can kind of, um, it is what it is. We're figuring it out. It is right now what it is. And it's so it's like, still when they, theater, it's still film, it's still art, it's still storytelling. Now we're just, we're transforming ourselves in the moment. Like now they're casting couples and their apartments. Yeah. So they're like, our they're apartment like, would not they're like a you're good really great, place. but your apartment, sucks. I don't know. You know <laughs> our apartment like, <laughs> sucks. <laughs> this art, because that's Zach's part of the apartment. Yeah. So it's super boring. No offense. It looks amazing. What are you kidding? Stop um, it. Uh, there's usually plants and stuff. Hers, the plants are over here. That's right. See, plant so you can see a plant from here over yeah. his left shoulder. Yeah. There's a plant. That's why there's a big one. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny that you would be the casting director would also be have a interior decorator as on yeah. the screen. Be like, yeah, yeah. This doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. Well, this has been great. I, 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 uh, I miss you guys. I miss you. I miss you too. Miss you too. Um, it's amazing to see your face. Thank you for doing this and. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for well, asking us. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we'll we'll see you both soon. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You. Hopefully soon soon.